Hi, in this OptoPlanner example video, I look into the uh, problem of assigning hospital beds to patients. Now, this is actually quite similar to assigning hotel rooms to guests or prison cells to uh, prisoners, as I'll explain later in this video. And it is also quite similar to other equipment scheduling problems, uh, which can range from uh, assigning small things or uh, larger things to uh, periods or teams in bounded by time of course right now um, optoplanner has actually been used for these kinds of use cases around the globe um, so let's take a look at this particular use case the assigning of uh, hospital beds um, as you can see um, a hospital bed has, an, has some equipment around it right and this will actually be one of the constraints we'll need to take into account uh, in, this, uh, in this particular use case, because depending on the equipment that each bed or each room has, we cannot put, we can only put certain patients, types of patients into that room, right? So here's uh, actually a solved uh, case. Uh, so uh, let me zoom that out a little bit. So here's a solved case. So um, as you can see here, we have a number of rooms on the side. So for example, we have room 11, room 12, room 13, and so forth. And uh, each room has uh, at least one bed. So for example, room 11 has only one bed, it's bed A. Uh, room 12 only has also has only one bed, but room 16 has bed A and bed B. Each room also has some equipment and the equipment you can actually see on uh, as these uh, rectangle boxes so for example the room this room has the green equipment which might be the oxygen mask uh, and this room has the green equipment and the yellow equipment so the yellow equipment might be something else like the availability of a morphine pump, pump or something like that as you can see room 13 and room 14 doesn't don't have any specific uh, equipment now then we also have a number of nights as you can see on the top so for example this is the night of the first of january the second of january and the third of january now um for each of these uh, patients that you see here each of these thing each of these buttons is actually a patient we know when the patient is arriving and, and when he's leaving we cannot alter that but we have to choose in which bed we are going to put this patient so for example in this particular setup we've actually assigned patient 147 this patient here into bed 13. now this particular patient as you can see it's a male patient um, he doesn't need any particular uh, equipment, so he doesn't need an oxygen mask or anything like that. So that's fine because this room doesn't supply any of that. As you can see here, here for example, uh, female patient 177, she needs uh, a, the yellow equipment. And you can see that the room we've put her in actually has this yellow equipment. So that's a good thing. Uh, there is also the green equipment available in that room. She doesn't need that, and that's fine. Now, what we could not do, what we cannot do is, for example, put this patient into one of the beds that does not have the yellow equipment, as that would endanger her life. And we don't want to do that, of course. That is a hard constraint. Another hard constraint that we have is that we cannot put two patients in the same bed in the same night. So there should not be any overlaps. So for example, uh, we can put this fellow, this patient 177 into not in the same bed as this patient 141 because they are actually sharing uh, two nights there. But we can put them in this, we can put her in the same bed as this particular patient because this patient is only arriving at the 4th of January while this patient is already leaving at the 2nd of January. Right. So um, as, as long as um, there are no overlaps, it's good. It's fine. So what other hard constraints do we have? Well, we also have each room has a certain type of uh, uh, gender it will allow. Now, in this particular data set, all of the rooms are pretty much the same. As you can see, they all allow they all are based on the split gender principle, which basically means that uh, you can put any gender in the room. Um, and sometimes there are, in some data sets, there are actually rooms that only allow female or only allow male patients. Uh, but here you can put any gender in the room, but you cannot have this, uh, a mixed gender in the same night. So, for example, you can see here uh, in this particular room, it has two beds in there. Uh, we can put a, a female patient in there. We can put another female patient in there. But now we have a male patient over here, and you can see that's, that that. Uh, the other patient is also a male, so that's fine. As long as there are, there is no overlap of um, 
a, a male and a female patient in the same room at the same night, then that's fine in these kinds of rooms. And you could actually have rooms where you allow that. Um, most hospitals probably don't allow that. That depends on the settings of the hospitals, of course, on, and how you've implemented this, uh, the, these, these constraints as a Java programmer, how you tailor them to your use case, of course, right? Okay. Um, now, each of these rooms also actually belongs to a department. So this is actually department one. Um, this, the current, in this data set, they're not just numbered, department two and so forth, and so forth, and department three. Now, one of the hard constraints is that in certain departments, you have to be a certain age to be permitted in there. For example, um, the, you might need to be, in some departments, you need to be 65 years or older. In other departments, you need to be a minor to be able to, or even a, a kid, uh, or even a baby to be able to enter there. And of course, we take these constraints, uh, these uh, restrictions into account, these hard constraints into account. Um, so that actually explains the hard constraints. So, and, uh, um, and you can see right now, all of these hard constraints are actually met. We have a green score, we have zero hard constraints broken. Um, and then of course we have the two other uh, types here. Now the second one is actually the medium constraints. That's actually the number of unassigned patients. Um, I'll explain later in the video why this is important, but right now let's just ignore it because this is a very easy data set. We have enough beds so we can assign all patients into a bed and therefore we don't, this will always be zero basically. And then the last one is uh, the soft uh, constraints and there are a number of soft constraints here. One of them is that so patients can actually prefer an equipment. So for example, you might want to have um, a, a room with um, a single bed, that's a typical um, that's a typical preference, right? Or you might uh, want to have a room with um, a, a specific chair in there uh, or the ability for your spouse to sleep there too. Um, now, the second kind is basically, uh, the, the, for example, the extra bed, that's basically the same as the, the hard constraint, but then just weighted as a soft constraint. Uh, but the other one, the single room thing is actually quite specific uh, because if the hospital is able to give you that single room when you, you, you request it, the, the hospital can actually charge you more. So from the hospital's point of view, what they want to optimize is they want to make sure that all of the patients who request a single room actually also get a single room um, as that's better for their finances. Right? And um, once that's done, they might actually still want to, on top of that, optimize and putting so as many patients in single rooms as possible again, or or maybe not. That's of course depending on the the, 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 the how they uh, envision their business constraints. In any case, we can handle those uh, regardlessly. Okay, so let's take a look here. Let's see why we are what are is breaking here. So we have the um, preferred room maximum size. You can see most of the points. So let me just bring this on screen. Uh, most of the points we 229 times. Uh, we don't are able, we are not able to give them their single room, and so we're basically losing about seven thousand points for that, right? Um, the preferred equipment type we're actually not being able to do that three times, and um, then also you have something called room spe special specialism that basically means that um, if a specific room or actually department is specialized, for example, in lung, lung cancer, you really want to have the patients with lung cancers assigned into that room or into that department. And you can see we even have a, uh, we even miss one of those, right? Okay. So let's see what happens when you start to optimize this, because it's actually the initial solution. It's not that easy to find already. It's already found with a, with a decent algorithm, but now we're going to use one of the uh, hard, uh, the uh, Good alg the advanced algorithms in OptiPlanner to optimize this further. So here we go. And you can see that the score is actually going down. And you can see as it finds newer and better solutions, it is actually moving things around. Um, and you'll see that happening on the screen too. So for example, you can see this patient moving around. Now do note that uh, we're only looking at a very small part of the screen, right? There are 40 nights in this data set, but we do have up to about 500 rooms so okay it's not exactly 500 rooms there are some gaps in it but we do have um a few i think 100 200 rooms here uh, so it, it isn't it isn't uh, not an uh, not on serious data sets and this is actually the smallest data set uh, we have some bigger data sets too which you can show if needed okay 
Uh, let's take a look now at the constraints. So we can see we have we should have we have we have better scores now. Uh, first of all, we don't have this we don't break the specialism constraint anymore. So that's good. The, the person with lung cancer is actually now in the department that specializes with lung cancer and so forth. Um, we still have one type where we somebody asked, let's say, bed for his spouse and then we weren't, we weren't able to deliver. And we actually uh, were able to bring down the number of single room requests we had to deny uh, about with a, with, a, with a few hundred cases. So that's actually, uh, sorry, with a few hundred points, right? So that's actually a good thing, right? Now, if we give it more time, we would uh, probably find an even better solution. Now, do note that we cannot give all the patients that want a single room uh, to g actually give them a single room uh, as there are just too many patients asking for that, right? Um, okay. Now, I told you this is actually very similar to, assi to assigning hotel rooms uh, or assigning prison cells. Now, in hotel rooms, you basically have guests and you know when they'll arrive and when they'll leave and you have to assign them a room. So you don't have to actually have to assign them a bed, you just have to assign them a room. But again, you have similar constraints. Um, you, for, you, you have, for example, the constraint that they paid for a basic room. So you have to give them at least a basic room. Um, if they paid for a luxury room or a suite, you have to at least give them that kind of room. Um, and of course, you need to make sure that uh, if you give somebody the suite and this patient is staying several nights, that basically means that um, you might need to give that that this is a long period that there is actually being blocked by that by that guest, not patient, of course, guest, of course, right? So um, hospital uh, assigning uh, uh, sorry assigning hotel guests to rooms is very similar to this use case. And the same thing with actually assigning prisoners to prison cells. Um, and your constraint in that case, you won't have to deal with the male-female uh, male, female constraint, although you'll be assigning beds, not just uh, room, not just cells, but actually beds. Um, you don't won't have to deal with that case because uh, all of the population in one prison is actually the same gender. Uh, but you will want to make sure that you have uh, the, the prison runs as smoothly as possible. So you might want to take into account other constraints, such as, for example, uh, the, 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 the violence levels or the profiles or, or religion or things like that, which might or might, might mix or might not mix well in certain uh, prison cells together. So these are all kinds of constraints. You can actually put into the uh, the system if you want to. You don't have to, um, and you can then actually make life better um, for hospitals, hotel guests, or in hotel guests, it's actually especially financially better, I guess. I guess, uh, as well as for prison cells, where we can actually make life better of uh, the prisoners at least, and or and also probably um, you know better life for them is probably less. Uh, violence in the in the ho in the prison, which is good for everybody uh, working there too. Okay. Now, um, let's take a look at another data set, and this is uh, unfortunately very relevant for prisons as well for, as for hospitals. Is that there might be too many patients, there might be too many uh, prisoners, right? And there might be too few beds, basically, for the, all to host all of these, right? So here we have a number of uh, patients, and we have to assign them. We have 2,000 patients, but we actually have far too little beds. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to solve this. And what you'll see is, uh, look, here we have our initial solution. And in our initial solution, you can see that a lot of the patients are actually assigned to beds, as you can see, right? But what you can also see is that um, in the same time, we have a number of patients which are still unassigned. And you can see these are typically the patients which require a certain um, equipment to be there. And, and that's basically their, their, their annoying part. Sometimes we actually do have some room in a bed, but we don't have the equipment in that room and we cannot schedule them as that would break a hard constraint. So here we're saying, um, and this is of course defined by the use case, that we want to make sure that first all of the hard constraints are met. If we put a patient into a certain room, we want to make sure that the equipment in that room is there. Um, it, we, we want to make sure we don't do, we don't overbook our hospital. And then the second thing is what, what we'll do is, um, given those constraints, we want to still put as many patients into the beds as possible uh, under those hard constraints. And that's why that's a medium constraint. Putting as many, and this is the number of, uh, this 1,354 is actually the number of unassigned patients. So 
Uh, well, actually, as we, we, we roll by, we'll actually see we'll, we're, by moving things around, we can actually put more patients into that that bed, right? And then you'll see that, in, uh, you see that for example, now we've just added one extra patient into one of the beds by moving things around. Okay, so this is the hospital uh, bed planning example. Um, if you want to implement this use case in Java, um, then definitely take a look at our website, optoplanner.org. And uh, try out this example. It's very simple. Uh, just download the zip and um, start the examples. There's a there's a shell script and a batch script to start those. 